What if I told you Toyota just did what no other car company could? They have revealed a next-gen aluminum ion battery that delivers a jaw-dropping 1,000-mile range and can fully charge in just five minutes. Let that sink in. No more range anxiety. No more waiting hours at charging stations. No more excuses. At a surprise press event in Tokyo, Toyota dropped a bombshell that stunned the entire EV industry. CEOs from Tesla, GM, and BYD were reportedly in the room, and the look on their faces was speechless. Because this isn't just a step forward. It's a leap that may sideline lithium-ion entirely. It's fireproof, lighter, non-toxic, and doesn't rely on rare earths. This is the breakthrough the world has been waiting for. And it didn't come from Silicon Valley this time. It came from Japan. So before this video dives into how Toyota pulled it off and what it means for Tesla, for gas cars, and maybe even for oil itself, make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications. This isn't just a story about electric cars. It's the start of a global energy war, and you're watching it unfold right now. They said lithium was the future. That solid state was the final frontier. But Toyota just broke the silence with a five-minute press event that left the EV world in total chaos. No teaser, no leaks, just raw specs on a screen. 1,000-mile range. Full charge in five minutes. Zero lithium. Zero cobalt. At first, people thought it was a joke, a marketing stunt. But what Toyota showed wasn't concept art. It was a functioning aluminum-ion prototype backed by third-party validation. Peak charging speed hit 200 kilowatts. Cycle life over 10,000 full charges with less than 5% degradation. Thermal stability tested up to 250 degrees Celsius without a single failure. Industry insiders scrambled. This wasn't a marginal improvement over Tesla's 4680 cells. It was four times faster, lighter, and non-flammable. It didn't need cobalt. It didn't rely on lithium mines buried under political tension. It simply worked cleaner, safer, and infinitely more scalable. And the material behind it, aluminum, not rare, not toxic, not buried under monopolized territories. Aluminum is the third most abundant element on Earth, and it's already mined, traded, and recycled globally. Toyota didn't just improve EV batteries, they detonated the entire supply chain map. Here's the shocker. The charge capacity isn't a theoretical dream. It's been field-tested, lab-tested, and fast-tracked for mass production by late 2026. Toyota's internal roadmap now includes aluminum-ion in at least eight vehicle platforms. And new patents suggest it may even scale to home energy and aviation. So, what makes this chemistry so different? Unlike lithium where each ion carries a single charge, aluminum ions carry three electrons per ion. That's three times the electrical payload in the same space. Combined with a graphene-based cathode, these ions move at breakneck speed with minimal resistance. No overheating, no runaway, no need for cooling systems or massive buffer zones. And while lithium batteries degrade under stress, heat, fast charging, deep discharge, aluminum ion cells don't care. Toyota's prototypes were frozen, then superheated, crushed, punctured, short-circuited. Nothing exploded. Nothing vented gas, not even a spark. That kind of stability isn't just safer, it's disruptive. You can mount these batteries under seats, inside doors, anywhere in the frame. No fear of fire. For regulators, insurers, and fleet operators, that changes everything. But here's the twist. While the public marveled at the specs, insiders panicked over what wasn't said. Toyota didn't mention lithium, not once. No comparison, no backward compatibility. Just a cold, silent message to every automaker still betting on lithium-ion. You're now behind. Tesla, BYD, GM, even KTL, all caught off guard. Supply contracts, mining deals, billion-dollar gigafactories suddenly at risk. Because this new battery doesn't use the same playbook. It doesn't need lithium extraction from South America. It doesn't require cobalt from Congo. It doesn't care about geopolitics. And the range? This wasn't marketing math. Toyota's prototype sedan completed 1,000 miles on a closed track using a single charge while carrying the equivalent payload of a Camry. No hypermiling, 
No stripped down test car, real world drive, real load, and real speed. The implications are staggering. If mass produced at scale, this would make current EVs obsolete in both cost and performance. Charging infrastructure would shrink. No more waiting 30 minutes. Highway rest stops would become five minute pit stops just like gas. But it's not just the speed, it's the chemistry itself. Aluminum is fireproof, non-toxic, recyclable at 96% efficiency, and most importantly, it doesn't rely on scarce minerals hoarded by a handful of suppliers. That's where lithium begins to crumble. For two decades, it wasn't just the backbone of clean energy. It was a monopoly, controlled by a tight cartel of miners, processors, and middlemen from Chile to China. But now that grip is slipping. Between 2020 and 2023, Lithium prices didn't just rise, they exploded. A 400% spike triggered panic. EV giants scrambled to lock in supply deals worth billions. Deals that are now aging like milk. And Toyota, they didn't just sidestep the chaos, they dismantled the system. With aluminum, they pulled the pin from a very fragile grenade. But that leap came with a twist. Infrastructure. Current EV networks weren't built for this. Superchargers, CCS stations, destination plugs, they topped out at 350 kilowatts. That was fast for lithium. But for aluminum ion, it was like trying to funnel a tsunami through a garden hose. Toyota's new chemistry demanded megawatt level throughput. And so the world's entire charging infrastructure faced an ultimatum, upgrade or die. Power companies, station operators, and government agencies began sketching emergency plans. In Tokyo, a one-megawatt pilot station branded quietly under Toyota Energy came online within weeks. Cars charged in five minutes. No overheating, no lines, no waiting. And it wasn't alone. Japanese convenience store chains already connected to the national grid announced plans to retrofit thousands of locations with aluminum fast-charge hubs. In the U.S., California-based ChargePoint filed for permits to convert solar EV hubs into aluminum-compatible megasites. Even Shell, yes Shell, was spotted in meetings with Toyota's infrastructure team. This wasn't just about faster charging, it was about familiarity. Aluminum ion closed the behavior gap between EVs and gas cars. Five-minute fill-ups, no range anxiety, no babysitting your car with an app timer, you park, plug, grab a snack, and leave. It was effortless. And consumers, they didn't need convincing, they needed access. That's when the conversation shifted from technology to economics. For years, the EV dream was real but expensive. Batteries were the most costly component in any electric car, often accounting for 30 to 40% of the sticker price. Lithium ion cells hovered at $120 to $140 per kilowatt hour. Solid state still stuck above $200 in prototypes only billionaires could touch. But Toyota's announcement changed that calculus overnight. Because aluminum is cheap, dirt cheap. It's mined in over 60 countries. It's already integrated into global logistics. And the aluminum ion manufacturing process, unlike lithium, doesn't require dry rooms, exotic chemicals, or cobalt coatings. Toyota's factories could retool existing lines with minimal cost. Analysts estimated their per kilowatt hour cost could fall below $80 by the time mass production begins. And that changes everything. An aluminum powered Toyota Corolla could sell for under $25,000 with 1,000 miles of range and a five minute charge time. That's not a premium EV, that's a category killer, a product that makes everything else feel outdated the moment you test drive it. The affordability doesn't stop at retail. Maintenance drops sharply. No liquid cooling systems, no thermal management modules, no explosion risk. Battery degradation is so minimal that Toyota plans to offer a 20-year warranty on certain models. One car, two decades, zero battery replacements. Even recycling becomes a strength. Lithium battery recycling is expensive, dirty, and inefficient, barely breaking even. Aluminum, by contrast, recycles at 96% recovery with almost no energy loss. Toyota's internal projections suggest they could achieve full battery circularity by 2030. And the final piece, scalability. 
While competitors rush to secure rare metals, Toyota's supply chain is eerily calm. Smelters, casting facilities, and aluminum foundries already exist in almost every industrial nation. No new mines, no environmental lawsuits, no geopolitical drama, just a familiar metal used in an unfamiliar way, scaling faster than anything before it. Suddenly, it wasn't just about electric vehicles anymore. It was about economics, grid storage, shipping, aviation. Entire industries now peered into Toyota's playbook, trying to decode the battery that made lithium obsolete. And as Toyota ramped production behind silent factory gates, one question echoed louder than ever across the global automotive battlefield. Who's next to fall? Because this wasn't just an industrial pivot. It was a moral reckoning. Toyota's aluminum ion didn't just outperform lithium, it sidestepped its darkest legacy. No flaming mines, no child labor, no groundwater collapse. This battery was fast, cheap, and powerful without the blood price. For decades, the dirty secret of clean energy was its own pollution. Lithium mining scarred salt flats across South America, drained precious water supplies, and displaced communities. Cobalt extraction in the Congo came with human cost, child labor, toxic waste, and unregulated pits visible from satellite images. But aluminum, it told a different story, extracted without brine evaporation or chemical slurry. Mined in over 60 countries without cartel control. Non-toxic, non-explosive. Toyota's aluminum ion battery didn't just eliminate rare earth dependencies. It erased the environmental red flags completely. There was no thermal runaway, no chance of fires, explosions, or off-gassing. It didn't leak, swell, or ignite under pressure. In safety tests, even when punctured, the pack remained inert, cold to the touch. Fire departments wouldn't need special hazmat units anymore. Insurance costs dropped. Regulatory approvals sped up. Everyone from recyclers to regulators had one response. Finally. And unlike lithium, aluminum's second life is effortless. No chemical stripping, no high heat smelting, no unrecoverable loss. Toyota's recycling system recaptures over 96% of usable materials from each cell with almost no emissions. The battery doesn't just last longer, it comes back cleaner again and again. The knock-on effect. EV production emissions drop by over 40%. Suddenly, the argument that EVs were just coal-powered cars collapses. In life cycle analysis, aluminum ion beats lithium, fuel cells, and even some hybrids across the board. For governments pushing for carbon neutrality, Toyota didn't just offer a car, they offered a shortcut. And yet this battery was never meant to stop at cars. Toyota had bigger plans. Hidden within patent filings, quiet mentions of aluminum ion scalability began to emerge, not just for vehicles, but for the grid. Stationary energy storage has long been the Achilles heel of solar and wind. Lithium packs are expensive, volatile, and degrade quickly under constant cycling. But aluminum ion, it thrives under load. It doesn't mind deep discharges. It can sit dormant for months or pump power for years. Toyota's engineers revealed a modular energy unit, a shoebox-sized battery that could power an entire home during outages, stackable, safe, silent, fully recyclable for off-grid living and renewable farms. It was a game changer. Entire microgrids could run off aluminum with zero emissions and zero risk. But the horizon stretched further still. Military agencies had already begun testing aluminum ion for unmanned drones and field equipment. The aviation sector quietly confirmed exploratory contracts with Toyota's aerospace division. Lightweight, high density, and non-flammable, aluminum ion fit into cabins and fuselages where lithium never could. And then came the consumer tech rumors. Smartphones that charge in under one minute. Laptops with one week battery life. Wearables that never overheat, even under direct sun. Suddenly, this wasn't about cars, homes, or even oil. It was about power. Who controls it? Who stores it? Who delivers it? Toyota had positioned itself not just as an automaker, but as a global energy platform and the ripple effects hadn't stopped. Patent offices in Europe, the US, and Asia reported record filings related to aluminum ion chemistry, 
many with Toyota's name at the top. Universities were flooded with grant money. Startups pivoted overnight. Governments rewrote policy memos. This wasn't a ripple. It was a rift. Inside boardrooms from Detroit to Munich, a single question now echoed. Is it too late to catch up? Because Toyota wasn't slowing down. They had already mapped their next move. Aluminum ion integration into industrial transport, marine shipping, even robotics. Their vehicles would soon power homes. Their energy systems would soon stabilize grids. And their battery, that silent, unburnable slab, had become the single most valuable object in the entire auto industry. Elon Musk's team, despite the noise, hadn't cracked it. Chinese giants scrambled for alternatives, and the lithium lobby, once the gatekeepers of the EV age, saw their walls begin to crumble. The next chapter of the energy race wasn't going to be about lithium anymore, or cobalt or oil. It would be about who controls aluminum ion and who gets left behind. Because the old world ran on combustion, the new one will run on something else entirely. And Toyota just lit the fuse.